If you know anything about modifying the latest Toyota Supra, you'll know that when the six port head version of the Supra was released, that the ECU was pretty much locked on all examples of cars after a certain date. Now, the only way to get around that is to send the ECU away to a northern European country that's hard to get to, have it cloned, and then it can be tuned. But there's still some issues associated with that, especially when it comes to warranty. So that means modifying the six-port Toyota Supra can be quite difficult, but one solution is to use piggyback style or interceptor style ECU tuning. And the one that we've chosen for our Toyota Supra to do is this race chip GTS. So let's take a look at how it works, what it does, and see whether or not it makes some extra power. Let's go. Race chip tuning boxes are essentially ECU interceptors. They splice into the factory wiring loom and adjust the signal coming from sensors on the engine to the ECU to change the tune rather than change the actual tune file itself. Essentially, it tricks the ECU. This means it can increase power in a car that has a locked ECU that can't be flash tuned. The downside is they can often work around safety parameters and often can't adjust for local conditions or fuel. The race chip GTS Black has seven settings, essentially a scale from zero to seven for adjusting power. This can be done on the module itself or in an app on your phone. Race chip also makes the XLR5, which is a throttle controller. Like the chip intercepts the signal from the engine, this intercepts the signal from the throttle pedal to the ECU, allowing adjustment to the response of the throttle, as often electronic throttle bodies are dulled down in factory applications to make cars smoother and easier to drive. It can also be optioned with a controller to adjust the responsiveness. First up, it was off to Croydon Racing Developments to test the race chip GTS Black. First up, a baseline run on the mainline hub dyno. Our baseline was just under 270 kilowatts or 360 horsepower at the hubs. The race chip GTS Black claims an increase of 80 horsepower on their website, but this is on the 2019 model Supra, which starts with the lower 311 horsepower. Based on that, we should expect to see at least 390 horsepower at the hubs. Our best run was 298 kilowatts or 400 horsepower at the hubs. After testing on a few settings, we found level six and seven made the same power, but level seven suffered from some light detonation, most likely to different fuel to Europe where the chip is made. Luckily, we tested on a dyno rather than just slapping it in and putting it on the highest setting. That's an increase of 40 horsepower over stock. I won't lie, that's more than I expected. We made race mode in the app level six and sport mode level three. You can see on the dyno graph, it isn't just more peak power, but more power everywhere, which will be very noticeable on the road and the track. Our next upgrade was the exhaust. With the ECU not being tunable, we decided to steer clear of a downpipe upgrade as these generally throw an engine code when used without a tune, and they also tend to not make any extra power without a tune either. We decided to install a titanium catback exhaust for looks and sound. This one came with an extra motor and loom, so it has dual exhaust valves, which work like the factory exhaust, helping it keep quiet for general cruising and louder in sports mode. Overall, it was pretty straightforward install.
With the exhaust done, it was time to do the intake. We reached out to Golby's Parts to get an FTP charge pipe and intake pipe. This replaces the factory corrugated plastic pipes with alloy ones that are smoother and better flowing. We also got a Verus Engineering resonator delete and a K&N aftermarket panel filter. We went for this setup so the engine still gets cool air via the factory intake duct, but some more induction noise without going over the top. The exhaust and intake mods don't necessarily make any more power as we can't custom tune the car, but sound is important in a sports car too. There are some crazy body kits on the market for the Supra, but we wanted to keep it relatively simple and stylish. We opted for a carbon front lip, carbon side skirt extensions, carbon boot lip spoiler, and finish it off with a carbon light surround up back. On the inside, we installed an aftermarket carbon fibre steering wheel. So this Supra came with some aftermarket carbon bits that we need to put on. And here's the thing, it starts off as a bolt-on kit that you can do at home, but let's face it, you don't know where it came from, you don't know who made it, you don't know what it's gonna fit like, and that goes from everything from cheap to expensive. So often you start off in the garage and you end up at a paint shop trying to get it to fit perfectly. So I wanted to be one step ahead of that process and have my own expert ring in. You can't get him, but I certainly can. It's Danny from Concept Garage. Hey bro. Hey mate, what's up? How you going? How you going guys? I know, I know you just love fitting other people's body kit parts, I'm being sarcastic, obviously, but just run us through. Obviously, people don't realize even the best brands, even the worst brands, don't always fit to perfection, right? Nah, look, when you're going from OEM parts, OEM built cars into aftermarket composite stuff, depending on where it's built, if it's locally built or overseas built, too many conditions come through, fitment's never gonna be the same. Now, obviously, you think you can do it at home and start drilling holes and pulling it tight and trying to get it to work right, but obviously, if you wanna get it perfect, it's a bit more work, a bit more skill involved, right? Yeah, a bit more swearing, <laughs> a, bit, a bit more long days in it. Nah, they're, they're not always going to fit to plan. You may always need to modify like a hole or extend a hole or put some tape, lose, cut, trim, remake. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly capable of cutting a hole in a bonnet for a bonnet vent for a race car, and I've done that to one of these, but when it comes to like the little tiny details of a body kit, I figured if I've got you here, you've, you've mastered it, I've seen your work on so many big cars here in Australia, I figure if we want to get it right, you're the man. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. The factory wheels actually look pretty good on the Supra, so we decided to get some spacers to help them fill out the guards. We also wanted to upgrade the tyres, so we went to Prestige Tire and Auto to get some Zestino Gredge 07 RS tyres fitted in a larger 275 front and 295 rear, which will help give more grip and fill out the guards. These tyres have 140 treadwear versus the factory 300 treadwear, meaning they are softer and will give more grip, which means we can put down the extra power.
The overall finished look is awesome. Not over the top, just right. It's amazing how easy it is to make a Supra look even better with some simple upgrades, even at the factory ride height and using the factory wheels. It's about choosing the right parts, not heaps of parts. The spacers and larger Zestino tires totally transform the stance of the car. The small but effective changes to the Supra could be felt on the test drive immediately. The car is simply magic on a windy piece of road. The larger and grippier Zestino tyres, improved acceleration, braking and cornering, the race chip GTS Black gives more mid-range and top-end power, and the titanium catback exhaust and intake made for better noises. It didn't feel like they increased power, and we were told that they wouldn't, but we went back to Croydon Racing Developments to see what the dyno said. As predicted, no change in power, as we still have the factory downpipe and ECU and unable to tune. We ended up with the same 298 kilowatts or 400 horsepower at the hubs. Make sure you subscribe as in our next episode we upgrade the stock clutch to the new Uni Clutch track and take it to the racetrack for some testing before we put it up against our Nissan Z to see which Japanese sports car is the best.